Hello, I'm Mark Bohr. Last year I gave you a sneak peek of Intel's revolutionary new 3D transistor, a peek that required shrinking myself to approximately 10 million times smaller than my original size. Well, since then, we've been working hard, producing trillions and trillions of these 3D transistors in order to bring you the world's first 22 nanometer microprocessors, third generation Intel Core processors. And today, we're going to take a closer look at this amazing technology, much closer. Right, Brad? That's right, Mark. Assuming that shrink machine of yours is still working. Still working? This is Intel, Brad. We make technology better with every generation. Take a look. That is awesome. Can I drive? Absolutely not. OK, I've got the coordinates set to make us about a million times smaller than normal size which should make for a fantastic voyage. Ready to get small? Let's do it. Wow, it's beautiful. It sure is, and I love what you've done with my transistors. Where to first? Let's head over to one of the CPUs. I mean, even as we integrate more and more technology into the die, the central process unit is still functioning as the real heart and soul of the microprocessor. And third generation core features the most advanced CPU we've ever made. Hey, looks like we got ourselves a quad core. That's right. And in addition to the four CPU cores, it also has hyper-threading technology. So this microprocessor can be working on eight instruction threads at the same time. And look at that, the turbo's kicking in. Along with hyper-threading and core parking, it helps the processor actually manage its own resources so it's constantly reconfiguring itself to make whatever you're doing run as fast as it can. And when it's not needed, the processor puts itself to sleep to save energy. And is that the Intel Secure Key over there with the Intel OS Guard? Good eye, Mark. Intel Secure Key features a digital random number generator to make encryption stronger, and Intel OS Guard helps protect against a hacker trying to take over your system. Third generation core will be the first microprocessor ever to put all these security features right on the CPU. Say, Brad, did I mention that we have to return back to our normal size before this counter hits zero? Uh, no, I don't believe you did. Well, now you know. So, let's head over to the power control unit. And don't worry, I know a shortcut. We're going to attach the shuttle to the ring bus, so hold on. Whoa! Man, I almost forgot how fast this ring bus is. As you know, Brad, third generation core is one smart processor. And no wonder, the power control unit, or system agent, is actually an embedded 46 class processor in and of itself. It's a processor within the processor that is constantly reconfiguring third generation core to provide the best possible user experience. In fact, if the CPU is kind of like the launch pad for the user experience, the power control unit is kind of like mission control. For instance, even though turbo and hyper-threading are implemented on the CPU, they're actually monitored and managed by the power control unit. And this is also where core gating gets managed, right? Which means the PCU is in charge of how resources get powered up for performance and down to save energy and use less power. That's right. And it's doing that hundreds of thousands of times a second, which is, you know, pretty fast. Yeah, almost as fast as the rest of this tour needs to be. Let's head over to the graphics processing unit before we get stuck down here. Good idea. Hey, Brad, we don't have time to stop, but take a look over there. Oh, yeah, that's PCI Express 3.0. Look at those fat pipes. That's how we ensure that future adding devices will have a full speed pathway into the system. And there's the last level cache, a really fast piece of onboard memory that keeps the CPU cores and Intel graphics engine fed with data to keep experiences smooth and fun. Speaking of which, here we are at the GPU. Isn't it beautiful? It sure is. And out of the 1.4 billion transistors we use on third generation Intel Core processors, I understand that nearly a third go into the GPU. That's right. Intel started integrating graphics right on the die with our previous 32 nanometer generation. But with 22 nanometer, we really begin to get the benefits of that integration. In fact, with 22 nanometer, we've been able to re-architect the entire 3D engine to give it additional execution units and make each of those units more powerful. Impressive. But what's all that mean to someone who isn't a microprocessor designer? 
Basically, it means up to twice the performance, so people can expect a way better experience for any visually intensive activity, from video gaming to processing their HD video movies. In fact, with HD media processing, Intel QuickSync Video on third generation Intel Core processors is nearly twice as fast as second generation. And that takes us one step closer to our goal of making the progress bar extinct. Oh, that reminds me. We better get going or we're going to be extinct. In fact, there's no time to set the exact coordinates. I'm just going to have to ballpark it. Hold on to your hafnium. So, this is what you call ballparking it? Hey, we're still working out the kinks. And be careful not to step on the fab building. Those things cost like $4 billion.